welcome back in this lecture 22 which will be the last lecture for polymer synthesis. I will talk about uh, copolymerization which I will continue from the last lecture 21. In this lecture these are the topics I plan to cover and the first two topics was covered in last lecture and I, I will cover the three in this lecture. Now, I discussed that you know like normal chain polymerization, the rate of polymerization depends on rate of propagation because most of the monomers are consumed during propagation step. So, if we write uh, the general propagation steps, this is say M1 which reacts with M1 gives you M1. Now, this can again react with M2 giving you M2 star. Now, we can write this as rate constant as K11, 1, 1 stand for this active aptic species and the second number stand for the monomer. So, this I can write as 1, 2. So, K1, 1 is the rate constant for self polymerization where active chain end is reacting with similar type of monomer producing similar chain ends. And in case of, so we can also write the other two for M2 star, this can react with M1 producing M1 or it can react with M2 producing M2 star. So, this one we will write as K21 and this one as K22. So, these are the two cross reaction and this, this and these are the homo or self reactions. Now, in this step, first step and the third step, M1 is consumed. So, if I want to write rate of polymerization or rate of disappearance of monomer 1, I can write this happens in the two step, first step and third step. So, K11 M1 star and M1 and it also happened in the third step. So, we can write as K21 M2. Similarly, I can write for M2 K12. Now, so if I want to, this is the rate of disappearance of M1 and this is the rate of disappearance of M2. Now, disappearance of monomer means where it is getting into the polymer chain. So, if I write the F1 by M F2 which is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the polymer and mole fraction of M2 in the polymer which will be given by the rate of appearance of monomer 1 divided by rate of appearance of monomer 2 which will be nothing but this K11 M1 star M1 plus K to 1 m2 star m1 divided by k1 to m1 star m2 plus k2 to m2 
M2. Now, at the steady state, the rate of this happen if we write the steady state condition, steady state condition, then rate of disappearance of this active radical active species is also 0. Similarly, d m 2 star is also 0. Now, if you can see this, this step m 1 is m 1 star is producing m 1 star. So, there is no change in concentration of m 1 star in the first step. Similarly, there is no change in concentration of m 2 in the fourth step. So, what is happening? The m, m 1 star is disappearing in second step, this step and m 1 star is producing in this step. So, if we want to write d m 1 star by d t, then it would be this step it is forming. So, I can write k 2 1 m 2 star m 1 and this is the step where it is disappearing. So, I can write k 1 2 m 1 star m 2. So, applying the steady state application we can put this as 0 and from there we can now put this one of the expression for one of the we can we can actually express in terms of the other quantities and then we can put that value here to get the final form of f1 f2 by f2 which I am just showing in the next page. So, this is the expression once we basically uh, as shown in the last page that this f 1 by f 2 is given by the ratio of disappearance of m 1. Disappearance means it is getting into the polymer chain divided by rate of disappearance of m 2. So, these are the two rates we talked about in the last slide and this can be simplified using that steady state approximation and this will yield this formula where f 1 is the mole fraction of the monomer. So, f 1 is the f 1 is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in field. Similarly, f 2 is the mole fraction of m 2 in the field and f 1 capital F 1 is the mole fraction of m 1 in the copolymer. So, when we are talking about capital F, we are talking about in mono copolymer and when you are talking about the small f or lower case f, we are talking about in field. So, and R 1 is k 1 1 by k 1 2, R 2 is k 2 2 by k 2 1. These are the rest, rates, uh, rate constant for homo polymerization or homo reaction and this is for the cross reactions. So, if we simplify this, we can get this expression for F 1. Similarly, we can get for F 2 or we can just get F 2 by 1 minus F 1. Similarly, the monomer fraction also mole fraction also we can get F 2 is equal to 1 minus small f 1. Now, these are the typical copolymerization behaviors possible. We have 
define R1 and R2. R1 is once again R1 is the rate of homopolymerization divided by rate of cross polymerization. Similarly, R2 is K21 by K22. So, so if I have M1 star, it can react with M1 or it can react with M2. So, this is K11 and this is K12. So, this ratio gives the tendency of this M1 star, the active chain end to react with M1 monomer 1 or monomer 2. If this is greater than 1, if R1 is greater than 1, then of course, the tendency of homopolymerization or M1 reacting with M1 is higher compared to a copolymer where M1 is reacting to M2. Similarly, if R1 is 0, then obviously there is no tendency of M1 to react with M1, but it can react with M2. If I have R1 less than 1, that means the tendency to react with M2 is higher than the tendency to react with M1. So, tendency of alternating arrangement is more than tendency of consecutive arrangement of monomers. So, we will talk about the first case where R1 into R2, R1 multiplied by R2 is 1 which we call ideal copolymerization. In this case, as we can see R1 is 1 by R2. So, R k 1 1 by k 1 2 is given by k equals to k 2 1 by k 2 2. So, this 1 is the tendency of M1 star to react with 1. So, the tendency of two propagating species M1 star and M2 they show the same preference for adding one or the other monomer. Basically, this actually tends to prefer a random arrangement of M1 and M2 in the polymer. But if R1 is greater than 1, obviously M1 will get into the polymer chain in greater extent as long as there is no shortage of M1 in the monomer mixture. And for this condition, if R1 multiplied R2 is 1, we can get a simplified expression of capital F1 as this. Now, another special case for this one is where R1 and R2 both are equals to 1, we call this special name Bernoullian copolymerization. In this case, the two monomers show equal reactivity towards both propagating species. So, the copolymer component, there is no preference of M1 star reacting with M2 or M1. Similarly, for M2 star reacting with M1 and M2. Hence, the copolymer composition always equals to the feed composition. So, F1 is equals to the small f1 and if they are so this is the if i plot f1 versus f1 this is the monomer mole fraction in the mixture and this is the mole fraction of monomer 1 in the copolymer so this is the case where r1 is equal to r2 is equal to 1 so for each point the this is 1 say this is point 8 point 6 point 4 point 2 0 similarly this is point 2 point 4 point say point 6 point 8 1 the scale is probably is not right i could I did not draw 
the scale properly. But what is uh, maybe I'll try to draw the scale little better way. Otherwise, it will be confusing. So maybe this is point eight, point six. B point four point two. Anyway, so in this case, for this case, F one and F two say point five. This is same as point five. So the if I have F one point five corresponds to F one point five. So the monomer feed ratio will give you the ratio of monomers in the copolymer in the same extent. Now, if I have other values, then R1 is equal to R2. For example, this one R1 is say, 10, R1 is 5, R1 is 2, R1 is 0.2, R1 is 0.5, and R1, this is 0.5. Point, point 0.5, point 0.2, point 0.1. So, if, if you can see here, then in case of R1 is in this set of curves, R1 is greater than 1. So, the tendency of monomer 1 to get into copolymer is higher compared to M2. So, if I for a say for a 20 percent monomer mixture, I have say about 70 percent M1 in the copolymer. But for the cases where R1 is less than 1, then the amount of or the fraction of monomer present in copolymer is less compared to the feed concentration of that particular monomer, which is which is very easily explainable, explainable that if the monomer is more reactive, if the monomer is more reactive than the other, then the R1 value will more than 1. As a result, that particular monomer will get into the copolymer in a faster extent or a greater extent. So, first there will be in, in first set of chains or when the conversion is low, the chains will have more of in this particular case M1 and as a result the composition of the monomer mixture will change because M1 will be used up much more extent compared to M2. So, slowly the ratio of monomer in the mixture will be high with M2. As a result, later on the polymer chains will have more M2 in the copolymer chain. As a result, there will be a difference in composition of the copolymers which are produced at the beginning of the polymerization, in the middle of the polymerization as in the end of the polymerization. So, we will have a composition drift in this case if we have different reactivity of the monomers. The second case if we have R1 multiplied by R2 is 0, obviously this can happen either one of them being 0. So, R1 0 or R2 not equal to 0 or R2 0, R1 not equal to 0, these two cases may happen. So, in this case R1 has no tendency to react like M1 has no tendency to react with M1 star or the propagating chain which means there will be tendency to generate alternate copolymer because the tendency of homopolymer or two monomers sitting next to each other in the copolymer chain is lower, especially which will have 
the R1 or R2 which will have zero value, those two monomer will not sit next to each other in the copolymer. As a result, there is always a tendency of copo alternative copolymer formation in this situation. Now, in a special case where both are zero, if I both are zero in this case, R1 and R2 both are zero, then what will happen? Then obviously neither M1 or M2 has any tendency to make self or homopolymerization. So, we will get a perfectly alternating copolymer. So, the resulting copolymer will have M1, M2, M1, M2 type rearrangement because M1 will not react with will not react with uh, M1 producing M1 star or M2 star will not react with M2 to produce M2 star. These two are not possible as a result two if this does not happen the possibility of two M1 sitting next to it, each other is gone 0 and similarly in this case possibility of two M2 sitting next to each other is also 0. So, we will get perfectly alternating copolymer and if you have a perfectly alternating copolymer then both capital F1 and capital F2 that means the mole percentage of monomer 1 and monomer 2 in the copolymer will be 0.5 or half because the arrangement is one next to each other. We will move to the third possibility where the R1 multiplied by R2 is neither 0 or 1 and there could be there could be many uh, possibilities in this particular option. First is that R1 is greater than 1 or R2 less than 1 or vice versa. We can have R1 less than 1 and R2 greater than 1, but the discussion is same and this is quite common in copolymerization scenario. In this case, as we discussed, it will be similar to the ideal copolymerization we discussed that more tendency of random polymerization or random arrangement of monomers in the copolymer and because R1 is greater than 1 and R2 is less than 1 at the beginning M1 will be more in the copolymer chain and later on when M1s are consumed during the copolymerization then at the later stage where the mixture contains more of M2 we will get copolymer chains with more M2. The second option would be both are greater than 1 1 which is a rare which does not happen very frequently. So, which means the tendency of cell polymerization is more which means there will be tendency of block copolymer formation. The segments of block in the copolymers will be more if we have both, both R1 and R2 greater than 1. There will be third possibility where R1 is highly you know, very very high compared to R2 or vice versa these are vice versa. In this case both the propagating species preferentially add to M1 because R2 is very much lower compared to R1. So, in this case both the propagating species M1 star as well as M2 star they both preferentially add to M1. This is more so as a result we have a tendency to first M1 because M1s are more reactive towards these two. So, first all the M1s will be consumed. So, basically we will result in homopolymer of M1 and then when M1s are consumed from M1s like M1 monomers are consumed from the system then we will have M2 homopolymer. So, basically in this case possibility of copolymerization is less we might result in that we first have M1 homopolymer followed by M2 homopolymer, but this is not a very common scenario. Another common scenario is where both are less than 1 which means of course they are um, 
their multiplication will also produce less than 1. And in this case, both have a tendency because R1 that means it has tendency to react with M1 has more tendency to react with M2 star. Similarly, M2 has more tendency to react with M1 star that means the tendency of alternate copolymer are more. So, in this uh, there is a for this case where R1 is less than 1 and R2 is less than 1 or R1 both R1 and R2 is greater than 1 which is or not very common. In this case we actually get this type of curve. So, this is where R1 is equal to R2 is equal to 1 we have a perfect alternate uh, uh, ideal polymerization where F1 is equal to F1, copolymer composition is same as monomer composition. So, in this case what happened first the monomer M1 get consumed more and as the composition changes we land up in this point where F1 is same as F small f1. That means the monomer ratio of M1 M2 in the feed or in the mixture in the mixture is same as M1 is to M2 in the copolymerization. So, basically in this case now there will be no further change in composition because the two monomers are getting consumed in the same extent as their current or at the instantaneous instantaneous ratio molar ratio uh, present in the mixture. This is similar to a boiling point diagram for few liquid liquid mixture and these points are called azeotrope. So, in this case we have a azeotropic composition and this azeotropic composition can be obtained as this using the formula we have used. So, this type of polymerization we copolymerization we call azeotropic copolymerization and then happen mostly in this case where R1 is less than 1 and R2 is less than 1. This is also possible for this case, but this is this is rare as we mentioned. So, as we we talked about composition drift earlier as well. For example, if R1 is greater than 1 and R2 less than 1 at the beginning, M1 will be consumed more. So, the copolymer chains will have more M1 in it and later on when M1s are consumed from the reaction mixture, the reaction mixture will have more M2. So, the polymer copolymers which are getting produced will have more M2. So, which means there is a chances of producing different composition of the polymers the beginning, middle and the end which is a problematic because when you basically the mixture will have the different types of composition which might give you a very broad property of the polymer chains. As a result, uh, generally in, in a industrial setup nobody wants this such a broad uh, distribution of composition. So, they basically do two, three tricks to uh, maintain the similar composition throughout the polymerization. The first is they actually limit the composition to at a uh, very low conversion which is uh, not a practical uh, um, way of uh, controlling the composition drift. Oh, another thing is possible that with the monomer like in this case monomer M is consumed more. So, we can actually supply more and more monomer at a predetermined rate. So, that M1 is to M2 or the ratio of M1 and M2 in the copolymer remains same, same throughout the uh, reaction and 
as a result the resulting copolymer will have a same composition throughout the polymerization. For this we need to supply or add the more reactive monomer in a, in a control rate during the entire copolymerization. Third is possibility that star feeding that means we can basically supply or add in the reaction mixture a lower amount of total monomer compared to the potential rate of polymerization. So, basically effectively once the polymer start it can immediately consume all the monomers. So, that basically the conversion 100 percent conversion happens very quickly as a result the copolymer chains will have almost similar similar um, composition. Now, this uh, the R1, R2 value will also depend on type of initiation. For example, if I consider a case of uh, uh, styrene, copolymerization of styrene and uh, methyl methacrylate, this is say F1 and F1 where 1 M1 is styrene. Then this is a cationic polymerization, this is radical polymerization and this is anionic uh, polymerization. So, basically when we have cationic polymerization, styrene is more reactive, we discussed that earlier. So, this will have R1 will have much higher compared to R2 and so R1 will have much higher value than R2. In case of anionic polymerization because MMA is methyl methacrylate is more reactive than styrene as we discussed earlier in this case R2 will be more react higher than uh, R1. So, we will have a this uh, as we discussed earlier we will have this type of scenario. And if we want to have the numbers styrene and uh, styrene and MMA in case of uh, radical R1 value for styrene is uh, 0 0.5 and R2 is 0 0.44 they are almost similar because their re reactivities are for radical polymerization their reactivities are quite, quite uh, similar, but for anionic styrene has much lower re reactivity compared to MMA and for cationic R1 is 0.5 sorry R1 is uh, 10.5 and R2 is 0.1. So, it is not only the monomer mixture, but the type of initiation which we are used that will also determine the nature of copolymerization and the composition of the copolymers produced in this uh, polymerization. If we talk about free radical copolymerization, then many copolymer commercially important copolymers are prepared using uh, free radical copolymerization of ethylenic monomers. So, some of the examples I have talked about in the last class. And uh, there are two, as we discussed, there are two common uh, scenarios where R1 is greater than 1, R2 is less than 1, and both are less than 1. And this R value depends on the reactivity of the monomer and typically for free radical copolymerization the reactivity order is uh, given by this. Uh, the reason is uh, steric and uh, resonance stabilization of the resulting uh, propagating radical which we discussed earlier. So, this is some of the values for uh, some of the copolymerization values and 
we can see that uh, styrene manic anhydride both are almost 0. So, basically styrene and manic anhydride uh, they form alternating copolymer and manic anhydride actually cannot make homopolymer by itself. Similarly, styrene and acrylonitride see the the value of styrene is much higher compared to acrylonitride. So, tendency of uh, copolymer drift will be higher in the beginning more styrene will be consumed. Styrene vinyl chloride this is in even higher extent styrene is 17 and vinyl chloride 0.2 and that is because the reactivity you know styrene is much more reactive in case of radical than vinyl chloride which is is very low reactive in, in radical polymerization. Similarly, this uh, stilvin and man manic anhydride they do not to make any homopolymerization, they actually make uh, alternative copolymer. So, these are some of the examples of uh, different polymerization. For example, MMA and vinyl acetate, you see the number because MMA is quite feasible in radical polymerization because of the stabilization of the propagating radical by substituting group, but vinyl acetate is this mon this type of monomer which is uh, not very reactive in radical polymerization. So, this is uh, tendency of this reaction reactivity is low. So, this reactivity of the monomers depending upon which type of uh, initiation we are um, carrying out this value will depend on uh, this reactivity of the monomers. For ionic copolymerization, these are much more selective, they are not very frequently used commercially, and it is a much more selective number of monomer pairs which can be copolymerized. And uh, cationic polymerization electron donating group and anionic polymerization electron withdrawing group we will prefer that we discussed earlier. And general tendency to an ideal behavior R1 multiplied by R2 is 1, and the value of R changes with initiator medium polarity and temperature. Some of the commercial polymers which are uh, prepared by ring opening polymerization, these are copolymers like copolymers of polyethylene oxide and polypropylene oxide, they by anionic copolymerization of ethylene oxide and propylene oxide and some of the examples also given below. This just for your information is not to be remembered so, these are all available in the literature. So, this is the slide we have showed in the introductory part. So, we have now discussed this uh, synthesis part. So, this part we have now discussed uh, how to make polymers from monomers in detail and a quite detail I could not go into very, very depth because of uh, time, uh, time crunch. But as an introductory level course, this should be sufficient for you to have a, a knowledge of different polymerization mechanisms and the principle behind those mechanisms and what are the typical commercial polymers that are synthesized using the type of polymerization I discussed in the last 2022 lectures. So, what we now have prepared polymers, now we need to find out whether we the, the, the what is the actual um, composition of the polymer, what is the molecular weight, what is the size, uh, what is the n group, so uh, what is the microstructure. So, this all will give the uh, you know, you know, we will move towards that and uh, in next lecture onwards I will start discussing polymer characterization.